How you doing, YouTube? Matt Mass of Beer Reviews back with a beer. I actually am quite bizarrely, I don't know. I don't know how I haven't reviewed it before, to be perfectly honest with you. And that be Russian Rivers Pliny the Elder. Um, yeah, I've had this beer several times, but I've never had it like at my house. That's that's why I haven't reviewed it before. Um, you know, I've had them, you know, at um, um, various different shares and tastings and all that kind of stuff. So I've had my fair share of Pliny, just never uh, had one to review, but I finally do, courtesy of my boy Oak Ridge, who dropped off a uh, little sack of beers the other day, and this be one of them. Um, so what do we have here? We have, it says not packaged for resale on there. I'm kind of curious about that. I don't know what that means. Um, you know, obviously it's a beer, you're going to sell it, but why is this one not packaged for re resale? Maybe it was sold in a multi-pack, I guess, or something like that. That's be my guess. Um, you're looking about four months, a little bit over four months on this sucker. I think we'll be okay. And, uh, these beers are meant to stand the test of time. And as far as, uh, lettering goes here, or writing, it's called writing. Well, there's lettering too. It says, Pliny the Elder was a Roman naturalist, scholar, historian, and author. In his writings, he refers to lupus Celitaris, meaning the wolf among scrubs, likely an early reference to hop vines growing wild among willows. Pliny the Elder died in 79 AD while saving the people during the eruption of Mount Vesuvius. He's immortalized by his nephew and adopted son, Pliny the Younger. Pliny the Elder, the beer, is a full bodied hop forward double IPA. Keep refrigerated and consume fresh to best enjoy this beer's intense hop character. 8% alcohol by volume. Let's dive in this sucker. Yeah. Uh, excited. I'm in the mood for a West Coast double IPA. I guess we're doing the Marion Webster dictionary version of that. So what are we expecting here? We're expecting bursting West Coast kind of flavors, a nice crisp, drinkable um, malt base on it. Impactful, you know, but letting those hops be the start of the show this real tight and tidy kind of beer. I mean, listen, it's not the first Russian River beer I'm reviewing. I think it's like the eighth or ninth one. Um, I'm a big fan, uh, especially their um, Damnation or the whatever, Consecration, Damnation, that kind of series of their kind of bottle condition beers. But I dig all their stuff that I've, I've had. I don't think I've ever had a uh, Bad Russian River beer. Let's double down on that. I think some of the best beers that I had um, when I last time I went to the Festival of Farmhouse Ales up in Hill Farmstead was Russian River. Um, so, yeah, kind of excited. Uh, let's see, Pliny the Elder, 8%. Anything else on here? No. Label, classic is classic. A B. Um, I, I forget what brewery. We kind of ripped this off not too long ago. I remember reviewing the beer. Anyway, uh, honestly, it has a haziness to it that I didn't expect. Now, listen, this is a fat glass. So, it's going to be a little hazier than what you're used to. But, then I expected a little bit more clarity in this beer. And I left a little bit of the dregs in the bottom there. If it's bottle condition, I don't think it is. But if it is, you know, going to be surprised by that, to be perfectly honest with you. I remember it being quite a bit more clear. Um, just a quarter pinky finger of a white could be head and that rich kind of hazy kind of glow to it. A little bit of funky particulate floating around in there. Give it a whirl. Look at how lively that beer kind of just jumps back out and becomes big and bold again. Let's get those. I mean, this is not giving me a huge kind of piney, kind of West Coasty kind of aromatic on it. I'm getting a lot of citrus off this, to be perfectly honest with you. Man, it really does smell more East Coast than it does West Coast. I mean, shoot me. I know I'm the messenger, but I mean, from the looks of this beer, the nose on this beer, it really does not come off what I remember Pliny really coming off like. I mean, there's a soft little, like... Like a soft little, soft little vibe of pineyness in there that comes off candied a little bit sweet, but it really is a citrus leading the way here for me. It just has this nice, soft, almost New England style. I know people want to shoot me and, and want to kill me for saying it, but it does have those kind of vibes in it. And honestly, from looks to nose, it really does come off as something that has a decent amount of new school New England style influence to it. Just saying. Just saying. Let's dive in. Cheers. Okay. We're on the back. We're back on the right track here. That is aggressively piney. Aggressively in a very, very beautiful way. There's a much softer mouthfeel than I remember. Like this nice soft mouthfeel is such a stark contrast. Aggressive. 
old school West Coast kind of bittering to it. it. Has that nice dollop of resinous to it. It has this nice kind of piney characteristic on top of that. There's a bit of um of just this sappy richness that is counterbalanced by this really soft kind of mouthfeel. I'm just blown away by the mouthfeel on this. I I, I don't know why I remember. I know I remember this beer being clearer and crisper than this. I could be wrong. Maybe I'm just making that stuff up in my brain. Once you actually drink it, it is West Coast through and through. Sure, you are getting those citrus, orange kind of vibes to it, but that's very West Coast influenced also. But with that lack of that aggressive, um, aromatic West Coastiness on the nose, I was kind of taken back by the beer a little bit, to be per perfectly honest with you. Because I thought maybe, honestly, I thought I was having the joke pulled on me for a second there because of the looks in of the nose. I was like, did this get bottled did someone switch the beer but no i mean is it different than what i remember yes is, has it been a while since i've had one yes um but i just don't remember it looking and smelling like that now drinking it's very much what i remember minus the mouthfeel i remember it being a little bit more kind of tight a little bit more tidy not that it was super crisp squeaky clean but this one actually has a really nice soft mouthfeel to it and drinks beautifully i mean look at that beautiful lacing on the glass already Yeah, that's delicious. It's weird because at that 8%, it drinks like 8%, but it doesn't at the same time. It's pulling off that cool trick to where there's no way I'm going to say this is hitting below its weight class, but it drinks so easily. It, that's where it comes uh, at something that you're like, really, this is 8%? You know it is. From the way the beer comes off, there's a little bit of soft kind of alcohol to it. Not like a burn, but you know you're drinking something of heat. You're, you're a little rosy in the cheeks. But then you have that nice, aggressive kind of piney characteristic, that sappiness, that resiness kind of pop in there with that nice kind of citrus uh, coming around in the background. And it really does have this aggressiveness to it with that softer mouthfeel, that really kind of sultry silkiness to it. It kind of is such a back and forth kind of proposition on the beer. Ends up being super electric, super very roller coaster in a very, very fun way. I can't believe this is what this beer is. I don't remember it being like this, to be perfectly honest with you. I do not. Correct me if I'm wrong. I could be wrong. I'm probably wrong. Listen. Whether this is what the beer was when it was bottled or, you know, how this beer has evolved over time is what it is. But there's a reason why this beer is coveted. There's a reason why it held such high esteem. Sure, has it lost a little bit of its fastball as far as people's perception of it being a juggernaut in the beer world? Sure. You know, uh, you know it, that'll happen for this particular beer, beer style, but just these beers that have been around f forever, you know, uh, at least in a new school beer scene. But there's a reason why they were at top of that mountain. They were the Mount Rushmore of those beers and probably still are worthy of being up there in the Mount Rushmore of beers. There's a reason why they were there in the first place. And when you drink this beer, you know why. Am I going to sit here and say this is my best, most favorite IPA that I've had? over the past couple years. No. I mean, is it delicious? Is it worthy of being up there? Yes. I think it's epically fantastic. One of the better West Coast IPAs I've had as of late? Yes, Mount Rushmore status, sure. But is it undeniably delicious? Yes. The thing here is just kind of throwing me off is the mouthfeel and the looks. I just remember something being quite a bit clearer. Again, that could be false memories on my part, but... The proof is in the pudding. Mm, as pudding goes, I mean taste. And it tastes epically. And effingly. How about that? Fantastic. Super nice soft mouthfeel. Counteracted or contradicted by that sharp, sappy, resinous, pininess that's not overly aggressive. That's the thing about it. It's aggressive, but not overly aggressive. Counterbalanced by that softness. So it adds a little bit of balance to it. You get that nice citrus underneath it. Let's see, again, keep going back to that mouthfeel. Done and done. Is it one of the better West Coast influence beers I've had? I was like, yes, Mount Rushmore status. Uh, value and availability, I actually don't know. Um, these, what they cost. So Oak Ridge or anybody in the Pliny universe, please let me know and leave you with, if you like, what will you like this beer? If you like beer, I'm going to put it there.
You know, I think if somebody drinks this and they don't like it, they, you don't like beer, okay? You might like, like, macro adjunct lager, fine, whatever, we'll call that beer. Um, you don't like crap beer, let's put it that way. Or you're very hyper-specific, you know, I know people that are just lambic nerds, and I know people that are just, you know, hazy dudes and hop thoughts and all that kind of stuff. And then I know people that are just, like, pastry stout people. They're very kind of specific in what they enjoy and specific in what they like. Nothing wrong with that. But if you're a well-rounded beer drinker and you like the old stuff, the new stuff, and everything in between, it's going to be really hard-pressed if you don't like this. Or very surprising, let's put it that way, if you don't like this. Tasty, delicious. I'm glad I finally got to review it. It's been too long. So there we go. Thank you very much, Oak Ridge, for uh, dropping a sucker off. Got one more to go. Uh, he dropped me off a blind pig too, so I can't wait to dive into that one. So there you go. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the review. Down there, tell me your experience with this beer. What do you think about it? Let me know specifically from the looks in my description, because I'm telling you what I'm drinking. You know, it's this is the only beer I had tonight. It's not like I'm like going in this with the wrecked palate or anything. This is what I'm tasting. So when I'm talking about and smelling more specifically, when that nose is lacking that big kind of West Coastiness, let me know what your experiences are more specifically with the old school versus something like this, the newer ones, and tell me if I'm just off my rocker. Um, massive beers if you want to check me out doing the social media stuff. Beer Massif if you want to check me out doing the whole podcasting thing. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the review. Hopefully you're enjoying a little bit of Pliny right now. Hopefully see you next time. Cheers. <laughs>